Hello everyone, welcome back to another guide for Botania. Today we'll be going over different ways to transfer, transport, and use mana. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. The mana start is a way of telling the net gain or loss of mana in a nearby pool. To make it, toss a light blue petal, a cyan petal, a red petal, and a green petal into a petal apothecary. When a mana burst hits the mana pool, the mana star will glow blue. But if it loses mana, it will glow red. So if I go into my inventory and take out these items, even though you can see I definitely don't have enough mana in here to make terror steel, I'm just doing this for an example. If I toss it in and it starts making it, you can see it glows red. That is trying to drain mana that isn't there. take this so it will glow blue when the mana pool is gaining mana and it'll glow red when it is losing mana so if it, so if you have these pools hooked up to other flowers that use mana you can tell if you're providing enough mana for the flower to be used sustainably or if you'll be losing mana the mana detector uses mana to create a redstone signal to craft it you need four living rock four redstone and one redstone comparator and that will give you your mana detector when this block gets hit with a burst of mana it will create a single redstone signal as you can see i'm using my mana blaster and setting off a signal but as you can also see my mana spreader here isn't firing that's because mana bursts can travel through it but this device this itself won't set off mana spreaders for it to be used. One thing you can do is since mana bursts, as you can see, can go right behind it. If I steal a mana pool and place it down, it can go right through. And like I said, it can go for 15 blocks. If we turn it on, boop, turns down our little redstone lamp. And every time it goes, the piston goes off. Also, when mana is going through it, you can also see it flash red for a moment. The mana flux field turns mana into power for machines. To craft it, you will need four living rock, four redstone blocks, and one mana steel. This can be targeted by mana spreaders, and when mana burst hits it, it will convert it into FE power for machines to use. If a machine does not use FE power, you will need a converter off of the mana detector so keep that in mind for your different power supplies. The mana splitter splits mana between multiple pools. And to craft it, you need six living rock and two mana steel. As you can see below me, I have four empty pools of mana, my spreader, my splitter, and a mana spreader here. If for instance, someone shoots mana into a single pool, it won't split it. For it to go evenly within each, it has to hit the main block itself. So if I just load into my mana spreader here, you can see that it's going evenly. If I could slow down, you can see that there is mana in these three pools, even though I didn't hit it, and I only hit this spreader, but is now in each of them. So if you're creating large amounts of mana and want easier ways to store it than having to switch between pools, here is one way to do it. But this isn't the only way. The spreader turntable will spin a mana spreader. To craft it, you need eight living rock surrounding a sticky piston. Let me show you exactly what it does. So we are over here. I have a spreader turntable and my mana spreader. And as you can see, if I hover over my mana spreader, every time it shifts between the ma different mana pools, a new one gets highlighted. This shows that it is hitting all of the mana pools in this area. Now, if I do the same thing I did before, and I just load this top one up full of mana, you can see it transfer from the top to the bottom, and now it is shooting out the bottom spreader as well. That should be enough. And now it is filling all of these pools. Though my, not evenly, it's still filling up 12 pools compared to four. The manatide bellows will speed up mana pool outputs. To craft it, you need six living wood slabs, a rune of air, 
and a leather. So if I take this, come over to my manipoles here, and I place it down, this little nub here is where it connects to the manipole. If I would throw a tablet in, and then right click on this, to power it as you can see here, mana will export from the pool and import into my mana tablet quicker. So if you have such thing as a greater band of mana and you want it to be filled somewhat quicker, you can use a mana tie bellows. But it is not activated by mana. The only way to use it is to stand here and just hold right click. A little cumbersome, but again, if you wanted that done quickly, it might be worth it. Another use for this is if you attach it to a furnace, it will speed it up and also increase its efficiency. The mana void is a trash can for mana to say. To craft it, you need six living rock and two obsidian. Oh, let me pick it up and let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm over by this display. I'm surrounded by fully upgraded mana spreaders, full of mana, flowers, well, exporting the mana to the spreaders. And I have a completely full mana pool here. Now, if I take this mana void and place it underneath, what it will do is it will allow the spreaders to fill this mana pool with more mana, but any excess mana that will be used will be deleted. So let me place this down. As you can see, it's now getting filled, filled in air quotes with mana, but it's not actually going anywhere. It's now just being deleted. So let me get rid of that because it pains me to see mana be wasted. So if I come over, you can see, oh, wow, these things are almost, these things are empty. Wow, that's a lot of mana gone down the drain. And this is still full because now all the mana has been deleted. And if I place it down again, you can see the symbol similar to the alchemy blocks that it is there. Personally, I don't understand why you would do this and delete mana, not just set up the spreader turntable or the mana splitter to store more mana. But this might have its uses in other ways, and that is up to you. Sparks can be augmented by using a spark tinkerer. To craft it, you need three living rock, one redstone, and two elementium. And how this works is you place it next to a mana pool, that a spark is on and then you can place an augment stone on top let me actually just show you exactly what i mean okay so as you can see i have a spark an empty mana pool my mana tinker and the spark is connected where's, where's it there he is to these two mana pools of gluttony and my terra steel agglomeration plate now there are a few different augments or types of sparks you can get out of it so if you can see, we have a spark over this pool with a spark tinker here. And this spark is connected to my gluttony pools and my terrestrial agglomeration plate. Now there are four different spark, spark augments you can make. The first we'll go over is the dominant augment. What this will do is it will pull mana from other sparks to fill its pool. So we have two limitless ones and an empty one here. So when I place this down, it will modify this spark to force it to draw mana into its pool. And as you can see, it is working perfectly and look at all of this mana, it's not working. That's because you need to apply a redstone signal to it. As you can see, it goes away, it is consumed and I know it's very hard to see, but the symbol on the stone is now inside the spark itself. So it is now drawing mana and it is filling up quite quickly. To craft the dominant augment, you need one mana steel, one pixie dust, and one rune of fire. Now that this mana pool is full, I don't want this to be a dominant spark anymore. So if I shift right click with my wand of the forest, it will remove the augment allowing you to put a new one in, such as the next one we'll go over, which is the dispersive spark augment. Let's place it down, 
And before we input this, let's also go into our inventory and let's grab a band of mana. But we're gonna pick up an empty one. So now that this will activate, as you can see, mana is flowing out of the spark into me for my band of mana. The dispersive augment will drain mana from a nearby mana pool to fill any items such as the band of mana or any other tools you have on your person. And now that it's full and all the mana from the mana pool is gone. To craft this, you will need one mana steel, one pixie dust, and one rune of water. And again, to remove it, shift right click and it's out. The next augment is the recessive augment. Place this in, we will activate it, and then it will go in. As you can see, it's not really doing much. But you know what? Let's, uh, I'm gonna add another pool to this network. Just so we have another one. No! This one's now getting filled. That is because the recessive augment will drain mana from the pool it's associated with into any others in the network that need mana. So it's draining from this one and going into this one. Now if I place another one down, let's say over here, it is getting drained from this pool and now be put into this one. And since this was late, it won't get as much, but they will now split from when I put it down. And to craft this, you would need one mana steel, one pixie dust, and one rune of earth. And to remove the augment, shift right click with a wand of the forest. The final augment we will go over is the isolated augment. Place it down, put it in our spark right here with our pool full of mana. I've had another full pool of mana, but I want these two to have mana in them. Actually, you know what? I want this one to have less mana. So I will give this one a recessive augment. Now, since I'm in creative, I can just go into my inventory, find the recessive one and just toss it into a spark. You cannot do this in normal survival. This is only in creative. Place it in, and now I am removing mana from it. And as you'd guess, it's not going into this one. But since I lost mana in here, you know what? I don't want this one to have less mana. I want this one to have full. So now I can go into my inventory, pick up the dominant one and put it in. And as you can see, all of these are filling it with mana. But even though it is a little hard to see, this one wasn't giving it mana. To just put a little emphasis on it more, we'll put a dominant on this one as well. And as you can see, this one isn't giving mana. That is because with the isolated augment, this will stop dominant and recessive pools from interacting with this one, but it will still be linked to your network. So I can, so my terrestrial agglomeration plate will still use mana from this pool but such as the dominant and recessive ones won't take or add mana to this. So this will kind of be a pool on its own or isolated. To craft it, you will need one mana steel, one pixie dust and one rune of air. One thing I actually have learned recently is you can actually dye sparks to have a different color. So currently all of mine are just the base, I guess white. I'm not too sure. Cause again, I haven't dyed them yet. So if I take this lime dye and right click on these little stars, it doesn't work. That's because you need to use floral powder. So I want this one specifically to be used only for mana steel or such as other mana type creations. So I'll right click with my light blue. This will only interact with ones in the light blue network. Cause if I right click, you're not seeing it connect to any others. But I want this one this one and this one to be for tower steel. Now, if, actually, let me go over to my tower steel and there we go. So if I right click, you can see that these three are connected, but not these. So I'll also come over here and this one will also be for mana steel creation. So, whoops, if I remove the isolated augment, you can see that they're now connected. And this one would just be all by itself. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, 
that's empty, so we don't need it. So you can also create networks of sparks, so you don't have to worry about different pools using mana. Or having your terror steel just drain all of your mana accidentally. Now you have all your need to continue your journey through Botania. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye.